Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the sum of squares using Excel. As always, if you find this video to be helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel worksheet, fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And I'm gonna be calculating the sum of squares between subjects, the sum of squares within subjects, and the sum of squares total. And these are steps along the process for calculating ANOVA, analysis of variance. So taking a look at these three levels of independent variable. So let's assume that we have an experiment and we have one independent variable named treatment. And that independent variable has three levels, cognitive behavioral therapy, existential therapy, and gestalt therapy. So each participant can only be in one level of this independent variable. They receive CBT, existential, or gestalt therapy. They can't be in more than one condition. And then after participating in the therapy, they take an assessment, and let's say this time it's an assessment to measure anxiety. So these would be, these scores would be scores from a psychometric instrument designed to measure anxiety. So then we have these scores, the same number in this case of scores for each level. And we want to calculate the sum of squares between subjects, within subjects, and total. So first I'm going to calculate the mean for each level of the independent variable. So down here this will be equal sign average. And then I'll select all the scores here in the CBT level and hit enter. You can see the mean for these scores in this one condition is 43. I'm just going to autofill this over to cover the other two conditions. So we have three means, 43, 48, and 56. Next I'm going to calculate the grand mean. And the grand mean is going to be the average of all the scores. So the grand mean does not factor in that they are in separate conditions. It just takes all the scores. All the values that were observed from the psychometric instrument designed to measure anxiety. So this will be equal sign, average, and I'm going to select from cell A2 down to C16. So all the scores in all three conditions. So the grand mean is 49. So we have the mean for each of the conditions and then we have the grand mean. Next, I'm going to take the observation and subtract it from the mean for that condition. So here in cell E2, I'm going to start the calculation for the first condition for CBT. So this will be the observation, that's X, minus the mean of all the scores in that same condition. So in this case, 43. Now, as I'm building this formula, I want to keep in mind that in a few moments, I want to autofill it down to all of the values for this condition. And I want to autofill it to the right to cover the other two conditions. So I want to plan this carefully. So this will be equal sign and then the score, the cell reference A2, the first score for the CBT condition. And then I want to subtract the mean for that condition. Now that's 43, cell reference A18. I don't want this cell reference to change for autofilling down, but I do want it to change when I autofill right. So instead of A18, I want it to be B18 for existential and C18 for gestalt. So in this case, I don't want the row to change as I autofill, but I do want the column to change. So before the row, which is 18, I'm going to put a dollar sign. That's shift 4. So it's A dollar sign 18. Click enter, and I'm going to autofill this down. So this will give me all the values minus the mean for that condition. Now, because I made that reference 
I made the row part of that reference absolute, I can autofill to the right for the other two conditions. However, I don't want to eliminate the formatting I already have in place, this red and green. So I'll move to the bottom right of the selection, pull that selection over to the right two columns, and then in the bottom right here there's autofill options. I'm going to select fill without formatting. So that will preserve the formatting I had in place. Now I want to calculate the sum of squares for each condition. And I'm going to do that down here in these orange cells. Now here I'm going to use the sum of squares function in Excel. It's SUMSQ. That's the function. However, I want to show you how that function works. So I'll demonstrate the CBT condition over here in column K. So this will be equal sign the score here from column E, the difference between the original score and the mean for that condition. Then shift 6 for the caret symbol and then 2. So I'm squaring that value. I'll square that and then autofill all the way down. So we have all these squares and I'll take the sum of all these squares. Equal sign sum and select all the squares. So I know that the sum of squares for this first condition, the value here is 896. So if I move here to this orange cell, E19, equal sign SUMSQ, sum of squares, and using the function, I just need to select the original differences here in column A. Click enter, and it gives me the same value, 896. So I'll delete these values here to the right. Here, with this sum of squares function, I just need to autofill this to the right. So it gives me 896, 2844, and 501, sum of squares for each condition. So the sum of squares within is equal to the sum of these values here. So over here in column M, in cell M3, this will be equal sign, sum, and these three values. So the sum of squares within is 4, 2, 4, 4. Next I'm going to calculate the sum of squares total. So here in cell H2, this will be equal sign, the original score, and now I'm going to subtract the grand mean, cell C20. And in this case, I want the grand mean to stay constant for all these calculations. So I'm going to use the function for key, and that'll put a dollar sign before the column and the row. So that makes the cell reference absolute for both column and row. So I autofill this down, and then autofill it to the right. And then I want to take the sum of squares for all these scores. So all these scores are calculated without regard to the different levels. They use the grand mean. Unlike these first calculations that are dependent on the condition. They use the mean for each condition. So here for the sum of squares, this will be equal sign, sum of squares, and then all of the cells under this x minus the grand mean. Click enter, and the value here is 5534. That's the sum of squares total. So up here in cell M4, this will just be equal sign, and I'll just refer back to cell J19. Click enter, and of course I have that same value, 5534. Now the sum of squares total is equal to the sum of squares between added to the sum of squares within. So at this point, I could complete the calculation. I can figure out the sum of squares between with equal sign, sum of squares total, minus sum of squares within. That gives me 1290. However, I'm going to show you another way to reach the sum of squares between 
without having to calculate the sum of squares total first. I'll be reaching the same result, just in a slightly different way. So if we look here at the sum of squares total, all the values that we used for that, we can take the sum of squares for each of these columns. So it'll be sum of square, and then column H, and I'll autofill this to the right, and we have the sum of squares for each of these columns using the grand mean. So it's different from these calculations because we're using the grand mean here. And you can see the sum of these three values, of course, is 5534. So I'm just breaking down the sum of squares total by condition using the grand mean and not the mean for each condition. So then here in these blue cells, this is just equal sign 1436 minus 896. That gives me 540. I autofill this across. I get 540, 15, and 735. If I take the sum of these values, that is the sum of squares between 1290. So up here, equal sign, sum, and these three cells in the blue. And I get the sum of squares between of 1290. I hope you found this video on calculating the sum of squares in Excel to be helpful. Thanks for watching.